Hey, let's dive in. Dan, you and I went to the event out in San Francisco at, at Moscone. Big intersection. I mean, everybody wants to talk about data center AI. We got that and a lot more. Yeah, I, th I think there's so much here. You know, I'll chat a little bit about some things that caught my attention, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of oxygen left in the room. You know, the 6.5, and look out for all these to drop because we talked to heads of the PC business, client business. We talked to the heads of data center business, GPU business. Of course, we mentioned we talked to Lisa Sue. So there'll be a lot of in-depth stuff here. But let me give maybe some back off and give a little bit more of a broad observation. Coming into this advancing AI event, second year, you could absolutely – be certain that all eyes were on the GPU. Everybody wanted to know what's coming, you know, which had already kind of been out there, you know, that's been talked about for several months, but are there any changes? Are there any material updates? Any new cloud partner wins? You know, the stock sort of went a little negative yesterday. I think people, uh, and Pat, I think you said this very astutely, um, people wanted to maybe hear about a big AWS win. Um, of course, Lisa came right out, and, and I, this was the tweet. The tweet was $500 billion TAM. She just went from, I think, 400, which everybody has said was sort of the most bullish forecast on Wall Street, to 500. Yeah. And now a 60% CAGR from 23 to 28 for AI accelerators. This is just chips, people. This is the volume. So when you hear things like TSMC is sold out for two years, Blackwell is sold out for all of 2025. Um, you know, that there's no HBM3 or, you know, HBM3 memory out there. This is what's going on. There is an insatiable amount of demand. But there's also this still this kind of, well, who's going to get market share? Because we all kind of know right now where NVIDIA sits. And NVIDIA's got 90 to 93, depending on which data set you look at. Um, and, 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 and there's even some speculation that with Blackwell, they're gaining market share, at least as a matter of revenue, because of pricing. We know uh, Intel is starting to ship out E3. And then so a AMD had a lot of success with their uh, their MI300. And in fact, uh, she even broke some some very interesting, you know, sort of news about what AMD has been able to accomplish with Meta, uh, running the 405B model on, on the MI300X uh, exclusively. By the way, another big breaking moment from the event. Um, but as as it sort of, um, you know, the, the event went on, what it was all about was the 325 and then the upcoming 355, the new architecture, uh, you know, how this is basically providing more memory because memory is the, the big need, especially for training. Yeah. And then the comparisons came out, which, of course, um, everybody's eyes were on that, too. And, and this was a really interesting juxtaposition for AMD because you've got the... Hopper series, two years old, the H200 announced a year ago, released earlier this year. And you've got this new part, which is just starting to ship in Q4. And you're at the same time, you got Blackwall coming out. And so you've got this kind of comparison that's going on right now is um, should they compare to the part that kind of came out earlier this year? This is such a fast moving market, Pat, you know, with the annual cadences now is a part from early this year, the right thing to compare to. You know, you and I both had some pretty blown up tweets that got a lot of responses. I was getting a lot of pushback for making that comparison. But also at the same time, what else can they do? You know, right now, that is what is out there. That is what is being used. Um, so that's interesting. But I think, Pat, this leaves a lot of work for Signal 65 over the next year to start doing some really significant assessments. So that was one of the, you know, the, the MI part was really interesting, Pat. You know, and, and I'm, I'm going to just talk about one more thing and I'm going to leave the rest. Um, I'll, I'm going to leave networking and client to you, and plus anything else you want to cover. But I thought the Epic announcements were really promising. The company was able to really make clear that they have been the undisputed winner in cloud. I mean, they just marched up Google. They marched up Microsoft. They had Meta up on stage. I mean, and these companies were up there talking about really how they've gone all in on AMD. I mean, Meta is probably the most symbiotic partnership of all of them. They seem to be very co-developing working very closely. And Meta, I think I'm hearing is what, maybe as high as, this is speculation, y'all, but maybe as high as 80% of the data center CPU uh, at Meta is, is AMD. Um, huge wins, but of course, you know, just having that overall hyperscale uh, business, Satya was incredibly bullish about the company. He came on in a remote interview. I don't know if he ever shows up anywhere. He's the, he's the anti-Jensen. He shows up everywhere, but never in person. <laughs> um, 
but the epic business has just been really really so strong and some of the things i learned yesterday about the head node about the impact that it can have about higher throughput and efficiency that was really interesting too i mean we heard double digit performance gains on the epic head node on some of these uh, ai systems but so that was great there's a there's a ton more but 34 percent market share at this point i mean which basically means they're crushing it in the cloud single digit in the in the in the on the enterprise so i see a big opportunity in enterprise for amd but that's a totally different muscle so I'm, I, I need to see but i'll pass this over to you because like i said I, there was way too much news to try to do in a five minute bit yeah this will be our longest topic and i think it deserves it so uh, let me fill in some of the cracks here. Um, so AMD came out with CPU, GPU, uh, client uh, solution, AI client solution for business. and But they also entered a new market, and that's back-end network. So there's the front-end network and the back-end network. Back-end network is, is uh, connecting all of the GPU nodes uh, together. Uh, and you need a, a different type of performance and different types of protocols to uh, make that happen. Uh, one of the biggest reasons training runs don't get complete, and that's bleeding over into inference uh, latency, is, is a breakdown in the network. By the way, the, the second reason stuff doesn't work is uh, GPUs burning up. Uh, and, and what's interesting, uh, this market has been traditionally dominated by uh, companies like uh, Broadcom, it, it got very, interestingly enough, the the tweet that got the most views was the tweet about the AI networking card that they brought out. I didn't expect this one, even though I know they have Pensando with DPU that's for front-end networks. I, I didn't think that that type of architecture could be high performance enough. Of course, it's programmable. That's what it is from the start. Uh, but it's an ASIC-based design, so you're going to get performance. We're going to have to see this one pans out. This could be uh, a sleeper, but if you look at the, uh, first of all, the market need for more reliable solutions um, and that the biggest reason for training runs is a breakdown uh, in networking. You know, there's known knowns, known unknowns that you try to solve for uh, clients. This is a known known issue. And AMD is 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 coming into uh, that that market. We had a, a very uh, interesting conversation uh, with that uh, on, on the six five. So we're gonna have to see how that pans out. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit competitively. Uh, what do we know? What do we don't know? Well, let's do AMD versus Intel in data center. So, like you said, AMD has a rock in thirty four percent. That's uh, peak uh, when I was at AMD, uh, Opteron was 27%. That was the, the peak. There really wasn't a cloud business. There was a web business. In fact, Google was our biggest customer for Opteron, followed by uh, HPE, um, uh, Cisco, uh, and a little bit of uh, a little bit of Dell uh, uh, at the end. So uh, I, I believe when the smoke clears, AMD will have put a little bit more distance between uh, itself and, and Intel. Um, now, when it comes to, let's say, doing inference, uh, Intel has the clear lead with its accelerators with, uh, with, with, with AMX. Uh, AMD's biggest challenge uh, is going to be in the enterprise. They have single digit enterprise shares. So they're doing really well in the hyperscalers. They're doing really well in enterprise SaaS. Uh, they're doing really well in tier tier two CSPs. Uh, but when it comes to enterprises choosing uh, instances in cloud, uh, there's not a ton of that. Uh, and with single digit market share in the enterprise with what looks like a vastly superior product, AMD has to get on the stick and invest in enterprise sales, enterprise marketing in terms of uh, collateral, in terms of POCs, uh, because if they give Intel uh, some oxygen, Intel is going to come, you know, not roaring back in enterprise. They have, what, 91% market share there, but it establishes them, uh, gives them uh, uh, a, a, a point to, to pivot off of. And Dan, we haven't seen the lift in enterprise from, from AI yet, 
uh, when that hits and if Intel has, uh, you know, even a more uh, competitive uh, product going into 18A, it could spell uh, an issue for uh, AMD. Uh, on AMD GPU versus NVIDIA GPU, it's murky. I mean, NVIDIA came out with new numbers for more finely tuned uh, uh, software stacks that, that they dropped. Uh, NVIDIA came out with their numbers and their numbers were not done by a third party. Uh, no third party attribution, by the way, there is NVIDIA. So I, I don't know, <laughs> right? I have, uh, I have no idea what I can say is what AMD showed with uh, its MI355X, which would be out uh, closer to, um, uh, you know, second half of 25, um, it, it is a vastly superior product to the predecessors of the MI300 series, including the 325. So, um, you know, it, it, first of all, it's higher efficiency, it's higher performance, and uh, it supports uh, lower bitrate models uh, a lot better. It's a pretty impressive uh, four and, and six bit numbers that, uh, that, that they came out of here. Uh, one thing I, I think AMD did a great job on is, is showing the type of scale that, um, that it operates in. Um, you know, what, one of the head turners for me, and I had 45,000 people uh, tune into this uh, on X, what, was that 1.5 million Epic processors inside of uh, Meta, and uh, Meta Llama 405B runs exclusively on MI300X for all live traffic. And I think what they mean by live traffic is not training, uh, and that would be inference. So. Uh, makes sense, but it shows the scale. I was on Yahoo Finance yesterday, and the first question they asked me was, "Why did AMD stock go down?" You had you had addressed this uh, uh, a bit. Uh, people were looking for a knockout kill. They were looking for a new uh, customer, like an AWS or a Google. A Google. Um, first of all, AWS, if it's going to do anything with AMD, it would be a reinvent in December that you and I are going to be uh, attending. And Google, right, they're putting a ton of effort into uh, TPU and NVIDIA GPU. They might not have the resources. But I think at the end of the day, all the hyperscalers will be an MI uh, customer. Nobody Nothing wants else, right, for merchant, right, just to have the offering. If Because if AMD starts to get traction, don't they want to make it available? I mean, that would be my take. Plus yeah, and also, awesome. you know, there's concern about the power that, uh, that NVIDIA has, right? Um, and, you know, NVIDIA is making all the money here. Uh, now, the hyperscalers are the second biggest beneficiaries where they can, for every dollar they invest in GPU, they can charge $8 uh, compared to a dollar in for CPU, they can charge $3. So they are making money, but but they're not making it hand over fist like, uh, uh, like NVIDIA is. So Anyways, a lot of conversations. Check out uh, the videos when they come out today, next week. Uh, we think you'll you'll enjoy. And we asked, you know, asked some pretty tough questions, and I feel like we got some uh, really good answers. Yeah, you know, just before we jump back, because like you said, uh, I I want to put this on record is I think there is a significant opportunity for AMD just based on what we heard yesterday about the CPU GPU combo. And I think you said something really poignant there. Hedging is going to be a trend in 25. And these companies are hedging in two ways. They either hedge with Gaudi or AMD, or they hedge with building their own. And frankly, my take is they're gonna do both. There's absolutely no way this, this, this sort of monopolistic AI control is going to remain. That doesn't mean NVIDIA is not doing great things. It just means these companies have to diversify the same way they did with compute. It's going to be the same. It's just going to move faster with AI. Sorry, I had to put that on the record on 10-11, my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom. Um, um, because uh, I think that's what a lot of people might be missing about why this is an opportunity. Yeah, and by the way, NVIDIA needs to be very careful in the way it uh, handles its customers and its ecosystem. You know, the industry is hoovering evidence uh, against uh, NVIDIA and shoveling it into uh, DOJ uh, as we... Uh, uh, as we as we speak, uh, I mean, I, I haven't personally seen 
the threats. I mean, nobody from NVIDIA has ever said, you better not say that or, you know, anything like that. But NVIDIA needs to be very careful in, in how it's uh, handling its uh, competitors and its customers uh, e e even more.